All right, good morning, my friend. Welcome to uh, Boulder. Thought I'd just say hello real quick. I just lifted my banner. Can't even see it on my glasses. They're all fogged up. Anyway, it's the backside there, fire. A lot of snow here in town. We've got a couple of feet over here on the side. It took me over 30 minutes to walk down here. Normally, it's a 15 minute walk. It took me 30 minutes because of all the snow and the melting and the slush and the water. It really snowed yesterday. Uh, I don't know if you can see up the mountains there, but uh, it's a beautiful day though. Anyways, I just want to say hello, God bless you. Uh, and uh, we're gonna do a street sermon and we're gonna do a scripture short out here in 28th and Pearl in Boulder, Colorado. So uh, I just want to say hello, hello. <laughs> Hope you watch the video. Hope you watch uh, my stuff or <laughs> whatever and uh, give glory to God. Don't give glory to me, I'm nobody, I'm just a servant. Just like you, we're all just working for the same boss. Amen? Talk to you later. Or in just a few minutes when I put this away, or I'll lay it down and I'll set up my tripod and stuff, okay? All right. morning welcome to the channel welcome to boulder welcome to a snowy day in boulder it snowed really good yesterday <clears throat> looks like we almost got about well, i guess six or eight inches i guess here in old town boulder or wherever i'm at uh, a lot of snow in the mountains there it's a beautiful day brown blue sky there's a cloud in the sky it's just uh this is the typical spring weather we have in colorado at least in the rocky mountain region uh, it'll snow really heavily, uh, kind of a wet snow right now, it's, and uh, then it'll all dry up. I mean, the sun will melt it all. In a few hours, it'll all be melted. So I'm standing over here because of the water. The, I mean, the, the, the snow is melting like crazy, and it's just causing all kinds of like, rivers in all the streets. It took me over 30 minutes to walk down here. Normally, it's like a 15-minute walk to my corner on Sundays, but uh, it took twice as long as normal. <laughs> I kind of figured so. I left a few minutes early to compensate for that, and I'm glad I did. So uh, let me put my gloves on. It might look warm, but it's actually somewhat chilly. The sun is nice and warm, but the uh, air temp is a little on the chilly side. My hands are cold, so I'm going to close on. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's pray. Lord, I thank you that we can come out on the street, we can study at home, that we can bring the Word of God out to the street, out where the people are, out where the sinners are, and minister to them however you lead us, Holy Ghost. And we thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing, even now with all the noise around us. And we give you all the glory for this sermon. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wow. So we've got snowplow guys on the street there, on the sidewalks. But uh, Non-walkers do not know how to relate to walkers. Uh, that's what I've noticed. I've been having driven for uh, since uh, July of 2017. So 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 2, 23. So six years, no driving. And so I walk everywhere and ride the city bus. And, uh, but most people don't walk everywhere. They don't walk to the mailbox. <laughs> and uh, they drive their car to the mailbox. You know, ride their skateboard to the mailbox. Anyways, uh, so they don't really know how to relate to weather like this because people were impatient us trying to get a walk. So the reason I was waiting is because the lady was trying to walk across this crosswalk, but the snowplow guy was in a hurry. He kept trying to get her out of the way, and she can't walk. She's probably 60 years old and has to stumble over all the snow and the walk. I mean, let's be kind to everybody. Make everybody a friend. That's why I say good morning friend or dear friend or... I'm always calling everybody a friend because uh, now it's hot. <laughs> I'm going to take that off now. 
It's kind of the problem with this kind of weather. Hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. Anyways, uh, be a friend to everybody. Don't judge anybody. Even if they're a sinner and they're rotten. I was walking down here and kind of a guy, I didn't want to judge him, but most people probably judged him. And uh, I stopped and I looked at him and I thought, Lord. And then all of a sudden I thought, can I buy you a cup of coffee? That's what came out of my mouth. And he looked at me startled and said, uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I, do you have money? <laughs> That's what he asked me, do you have money to buy me coffee? I said, yeah. <laughs> so I gave him three gospel tracts and my donation to, to the poor. And I could, he couldn't stop saying thank you. He was so excited. He, he just, on and on and on and on and on. He walked with me for a few minutes, just telling me how, how thrilled he was, how excited he was. I made my day, man. And that one guy who I didn't judge, I made him a friend, and I saw a need. Instead of saying, have a good day, be blessed, I bought him breakfast, in a sense. I mean, not a big breakfast, but, you know, biscuit and coffee, coffee or whatever, biscuits and gravy, whatever. And I uh, told him where to go to get the, I mean, if he doesn't do it, am I, is it my problem? If he goes and does something else with the money, I, I don't care. I blessed him. What he does with it is God's deal, not my deal. But he's, gonna, he's got gospel tracts now. And another gentleman, just a few moments ago, I was, I was just finished my scripture short. He uh, came up to me and says, I've seen you before out here. And, uh, do you, uh, and I know you ministered a lot of people, or something like that. And he said, uh, can you, uh, would you, do you have a couple dollars that I can get on the bus? Because I can't walk anywhere. It's just been really hard walking around. I said, sure. And he said, wow, really? I knew you were the, I wasn't sure if you were the guy or not. So I'm known as a giver on the street. And believe it or not, no one takes advantage of me. They don't. Because everybody, I know just about everybody on the street after a month or so, because there's a lot, you know, transient people. And so in the beginning, they don't know me. They treat me like dirt, but I treat them with the friendship, with kindness. And then all of a sudden, hey, you're not like everybody else. I treat everybody like they're my friend. Yeah. I don't need to camp out with them. I don't need to sleep with them. I don't need to have, uh, you know, I don't need to associate with them, but I can treat them as my friend and talk with them with kindness and cordiality and just be a nice person to them with a smile and a greeting and bless their day whatever they need, you know? It's just, you know, and so he went down, got on the bus, got on the bus. So praise God. And plus he handed out the gospel tracts. He said, I handed out the other three you gave me here a while back. I said, all right, praise God. And he said, God bless you, sir. I said, God bless you too, man. Have a great day. Isn't that wonderful? I had, and plus walking down here, I had three people honk their horn at me and wave. I don't, didn't recognize any of the cars. I didn't, rec I mean, that's not common. Now, the reason I'm saying all these testimonies is that's not normal for Boulder on Sunday. That's not normal. And so, I don't know. Why isn't it normal? I don't know. You know, and what, I, I guess what I want to say there is every day is not a rotten day. <laughs> it can't be. There's some days that are very nice, very pleasant, and then there's other days that are very bad and very bad. So you've got to endure the bad times. Sometimes those bad times could be for a week, could be bad time, could be for six months. You've just got to endure through that rough time. When you feel like you want to run away and hide someplace, don't, don't. Just sit down, stay calm, weather the storm. Weather the storm. And if you don't weather the storm. So the only way that you can weather the storm that comes into a person's life is you have to have a good, solid rock foundation in your life. If you have that, then you can wait out the storm. If you do not have that and your, your house is built on have fun, play, have a good time, party, and whatever, you know, you know, Whatever happens is whatever happens. You just float around and you just skip down through life thinking life is just a breeze. And you have no foundation. It's all built on the world, all built on sand. When the storm comes, you're going to dive right into the storm and your storm could probably take you out and you'll die in the storm. See? I'm talking about a Christian or an unbeliever. Christian or non-Christian. Believer or non-believer. They both happen. It both happens to everybody. Storms come to everybody. 
And so that storm, got to get ready. Prepare now for a storm that's coming, because a storm is coming. A storm is coming. A storm, listen, a storm is coming. Are you ready for the most horrible, horrendous storm that this planet has ever seen? Are you ready? Are you really? Have you prepared? Because if to say I am ready and you have not prepared, you're not ready. You're not ready. And all these different small little storms that come into our lives, all those are testing to see if you can hold water or not. It's testing to see if you can withstand that storm that's coming. Testing to see where you are. You better thank God that he brings storms and trials and tribulations in your life. Now, so you can get ready for that storm that's coming. Because Jesus said, there's nothing been like, like it ever in the world. Nothing ever like in the world. So she's shaking her head. So she's, you know, she's all duded up as a Satanist. And she thinks that's all okay. And she walked by, shaking her head as she walked all over to the corner. Is she ready? She may think she's ready. She thinks she might be loving life and things are going good for her. She's got money in her pocket or whatever. She's happy. She's warm. She's comfortable. Maybe you got, you know. Is she really ready? She's not ready because she hasn't prepared. I, I wish people would, you know, I can't believe, I've, I've, I've asked people so many times to watch those two videos, prepare and ready, part one and part two, prepare and ready, that I did in Grand Junction here uh, a couple weeks ago. Look to my channel and look for those two videos. And watch them all the way through. And I've, I've said that probably three or four times. And not one person has gone back to look at it that I'm aware of because the view count hasn't changed. Now, if it has changed, that's fine. And if you watch it, fine. I'm not talking to any one person because if, if of all the people that watch it, that view count should have quadrupled, but it didn't. It should have shot right up to 100, maybe 120, 150, but it stayed right around 25 or 30 or whatever. Two of the most important videos that I've done this year, prepare and be ready. Prepare and Ready are the title of those two videos, part one and part two. A lot of people think they're ready and they're not. All right, let's pray again. Lord, help us to prepare. Show us how to prepare. Show us and teach us what it's like to prepare ourselves for the next season, to be ready for that season when it comes. We thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, so let's get into the Word. I also want to apologize for last week. Uh, as you notice, there was no scripture shorts and no street sermons I preached except on Sunday last week. I'm in a storm too. Just because you're a preacher doesn't mean storms don't come to you. And storms, sometimes you have to wait them out. And so I'm not going to wait it out inside the storm. I'm going to come out of the weather and I'm going to wait at home. So I'm, I'm experiencing more of a spiritual storm rather than a physical storm. So I'm not going to be out here at the mercy of Satan and get killed out here when I know there's a storm out there. I'm not stupid and I'm not ignorant. I'm in it for the long, long, long haul. I'm not in it for the short haul. I'm not in it to get glory or following or somebody say, oh, you did a good job. I don't care about any of that. I appreciate it, no doubt about that. I mean, we need to be thankful in all things. But I've had a storm. And so I waited Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. I didn't go to Broomfield. I didn't go to Denver. I asked. I was, three of those days, I was ready to head out the door. Two of them, I knew I was going to go out. But the other days, I had my banner rolled up at, by the door. I had my backpack ready, everything ready to go. The Lord says, I want you to stay home. Yes, sir. Am I going to say, no, i got to go to work, Lord, because I'm working. This is my job. You, you see, so... I am prepared, therefore, when storms come, I'm, all, I'm ready. But every storm helps me to prepare a little better for the next storm. Yeah, I'm in a, I just finished a seven day preparatory, prepare myself for something I'm doing today. Today is day one of something I'm doing. And I couldn't do it if I wasn't prepared. No way, I've tried what I'm doing, for many, 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 many times, and I failed many, 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 many times. And the reason I've always failed is because I didn't understand the process 
or the importance of being ready. Okay? <laughs> Praise God. All right, so be ready. <laughs> be ready. The only way to be ready is to prepare. I'm tired of people saying, be ready. Well, how? How do I be ready? <laughs> That's what we're talking about all year. Fire. That's the season title for 2024 that we're preaching under. That banner, that seasonal title, that banner over us this year is fire. F-I-R-E, fire. Fire. Most people think fire is destruction. It sure is. And you're going to be destroyed if you don't stop doing what you're doing. If it's bad, evil. Sorry. Uh, you know, everybody's warning you. Every Christian is probably warning you. But you said, well, I don't need to do that. I'm going to do what I want to do because it feels good. It makes my flesh feel happy. Well, you're going to go the way of the flesh. The flesh is going to die. Sorry. And you're, that flesh is going to experience something that you wish you... I mean, it's so real. But there's a good part of fire also. Good part of fire also. So we're talking on the 506 verses that contain the word fire all year long. We're doing 10 verses a week, 50 weeks, that's 500, plus a few more, you know, better down. And uh, we're doing it in a certain way. And uh, so we started this on January 1st, and we'll go all the way to the 31st. And uh, I'm going to show you this diagram here. It's on our Sunday prayer letter. I wish you'd get it. You can go to preacherjohn.ck.page, P-A-G-E, and subscribe to our Sunday prayer letter. Why not? It puts people into my prayer book. I pray over, over everybody on our email list, and uh, you get a whole letter. I mean, it was a pretty big letter this Sunday, and uh, it was pretty nice. I actually sent it out Saturday night. I'm trying to send it out just after I write it and just get it out there instead of waiting till 4 o'clock Sunday morning to go out. So I, I sent it out like at about, I don't know, about 6 or 6.30, 5.30, something like that. It went out last night. So if you haven't checked your email, go check it <laughs> right there. All right. So uh, this diagram right here is a uh, line, and this thing represents a uh, uh, what they call an ampersign, ampersand. And it's the 27th letter of the alphabet, the English alphabet. There's 26 letters, and then the 27th is what's called as an ampersand. Ampersand, A-M-P, or A-M-B-E-R-S-A-N-D, ampersand, ampersand, something like that. It means that uh, what we're talking about is very important. Some people, it actually started in etc., etc., is what it kind of really originally meant, because it's Latin. Uh, so it's, uh, it comes from a Latin um, format, it was Latin formatting. But in the 1611 edition, the first edition of the King James Bible, and the subsequent editions after that, uh, they God put in the ampersand sign. And when you look at the 1611, it it's amazing where it's placed because in the King James 1611, there's also the word and a n d. Some people think this is an and sign. It's not an and sign. It's an et cetera sign. And, but it, I guess it, and it could be used as an and sign also. So it has different meanings. One symbol has different meanings. All right. And in the King James 1611, uh, when you saw the ampersand sign, you have to stop and look because God is going to bring up some very, very highly important uh, stuff that you need to know about. And it's scattered throughout. It's really interesting. So uh, anyway, that's for those who are interested. If those you're not interested, then doesn't mean nothing to you. All right. And so this line here, and these X's are the uh, X's are for the uh, the the uh, scriptures here, and the scriptures go from uh, one side to the other. So one and one, two and two, three and three, four and four, and five and five. We we'll do this Sunday through Thursday. Then Friday and Saturday are right in the middle. So this fire is the first and the last, and we go down into the verse and up from the verse, and towards the center, towards the center. And in the center, this ampersand symbolizes a, a soldier of Christ fully, ar fully clothed in the armor of God. And the fire of God comes up and centers right there. 
and the fire of God keeps the soldier of Christ pure as he does his battle in the spirit. Now, if that soldier is not prepared and not clothed in the armor of God, that fire is going to do some damage. It's going to burn some chaff. It's going to burn some fringe, some hair a little bit, and you may have the smell of smoke on you because you have sin in your life. All right? So, uh, now get right with the Lord. <laughs> All right? And so that's what we got here. Part one right here is uh, uh, these two verses here, Exodus 30, 20. And then part one also is over here, Revelation, what is that, 8, 5? 8, 5. And then we go in, and these are the verses. And then Friday and Saturday, the Lord said, Friday and Saturday is to be, to have it be remembered and to have remembrance. So that's Genesis and uh, John. Those are the two books, Genesis and John, talk about being remembered. And, oh boy, here comes the snowplow. Oh boy. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta make do something. Boy, that guy's coming down the road. My banner's over there. Uh, hang on a second. <laughs> I thought he was gonna wipe all the snow out. As they throw it, that's why all the sidewalks are all covered with snow, because the snow plow comes through, covers up the sidewalk. And uh, people haven't cleaned their sidewalk. Everywhere, as many have, but not everybody. So I hope you got that understanding. It's kind of interesting, because the reason this uh, symbol came up, because I, when I first started this, I said, how, Lord, Holy Spirit, how am I going to keep track of 506 verses? Because I know you don't want me to go from the top down to the bottom in uh, chronological order I know that so if I and, and I know it feels like you want me to kind of move around a little bit in a different format and so I'm praying and praying and pray. it probably took me three or four hours of prayer while I was sitting at my desk writing the first Sunday prayer letter that this is going to be in because I didn't know what he wanted me to do I knew that first week but not the second and third I think this is the fifth week of the year I think anyways uh, hang on a second <laughs> Got to get away in case people, I can't get in people's way. And uh, anyways, my banner takes a beat. I put over a thousand hours, about a thousand hours a year on my banner. That's the idea. Sometimes I don't get it. So it gets pretty beat up. I use the same banner all year long. Uh, last year's been retired and all of our banners will be hung in our church eventually. Uh, that's the idea, to hang them all uh, in the ceiling or somehow hang them so people can read both sides of the banner. They're not gonna be on the wall. They're gonna be so people can hang down, so people can see both sides of the banner and they'll be all over our church. But right now we just have one banner on the wall, actually with a pole, that uh, every banner is, is unique and different and nothing like it anywhere in the world. There's nobody has this banner everywhere in the, in the world. This is a very, this is a custom banner made by the Holy Ghost. Just like my other banner, my other banner, my other, all my banners except for number one uh, was custom made just for me by the Holy Ghost. And uh, this banner is called Fire, and that's the message that we're preaching on, Fire. All right, so when I prayed at the, my desk about the Sunday prayer letter, he uh, showed me, he started, he had me draw, he had me draw this out. Draw this out before I put the, I put this in, and he said, that's an ampersand. And uh, then he had this, and he said, I want you to go to the first mention of fire, and I want you to go to the last mention of fire. The first time and the second time. I mean the last time. The beginning and the end. All right? And then come towards the middle. Next verse, the next verse, the next verse, the next verse. Then in the end, the next verse, the next verse, the next verse, the next verse. I'm explaining this because this is really important really important it's not just the bible verses it's the structure of the bible verses god structures his word this bible the king james bible is structured by god now god knows how to structure his word in delivering a message and delivering a message the way god wants the message delivered okay so i'm kind of a little bit of a teaching here and so this is how he had me do it the reason why it's this way is because this verse relates to this verse. So Exodus 30, 20, 
and Revelation 8.5 relate to each other. Now, at first glance at looking at ink on paper, you're gonna say, I don't, I don't see it. That's because you're looking with your physical eyes. One of the attributes or the things that, that God asks us to do when we go through this exercise all year long is don't just look at the physical part of the word. Look at the, you know, look at the physical and then spend a few moments, as we told us to do, spend a few moments until the spirit is revealed and then go into the spirit into each verse. Wow, see that's new to me. That's new to me, but God has prepared me to receive this. That's why I was ready to receive this. This is very detailed, very detailed, and it requires precision in the Word of God. If you're happenstance with the Word of God, if you're flippant with the Word of God, if you think every Bible is a Bible, as the Word of God, you think every Bible on the planet that's English, that's, Eng that's Christian, you think every Christian Bible is the Word of God, then you won't get this. It'll go right over your head because you don't get the structure of the Word of God. You know, you just think, long as it feels good, I'm okay with God. You know, there's a lot of things in God's kingdom that don't feel good because the feeling is our flesh. No flesh is gonna glory and have fun in the kingdom of God, sorry. So if that's your criteria, do I feel good and happy and content in my spirit and my flesh? Do, am I satisfied physically? You're gonna mess up, you're gonna mess up. And the reason why we wanna do it this way, and I'll say it one more time, you look at the physical part of the scripture and you wait a few moments on the Lord and the Lord will open your eyes and then you can enter into the spirit of the verse, inner spirit of the verse, and then you can look around that verse in the spirit with your spiritual eyes, your spiritual ears, and your spiritual heart, and you can get more out of it. And then when you go to the next verse, you do the same thing. And you'll see a connection. It's amazing what's been going on so far. And in that exercise, you are building up your spirit by the word of God. And that building up is your faith in your spirit by Christ Jesus, working in you through his word. He is the word of God, and this is the word of God. That's the uppercase, the word of God, the Godhead. And this is, he's the author, and he authored this book, the word of God, lowercase. You don't ever uppercase this Bible, because this Bible, when you uppercase the Bible, take the, the W and make it automatically because you don't know what you're doing, you've messed up. God's not gonna reveal to you because I'm telling you right now, and there's a lot of preachers who are talking like I'm talking. Just look around. Actually, there's not that many, <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> so, <laughs> let me, let me uh, give a plug to somebody I've been watching the last many weeks, and that is uh, uh, G. John Rowe, Gary Roverino down there in Phoenix. Uh, his channel, his YouTube channel is Above God's Name. Above God's Name, 1611. Above God's Name is the name of his channel. And I strongly, strongly uh, encourage you to go to his channel, subscribe, and be a part of what he's doing, what God's doing in his ministry, in his life. It is fantastic, it's fantastic. And get his book, Conceal uh, from Christians, the Word of God, or something like that. It's uh, Conceal, anyways, you'll see it. And uh, it's on our book list too. It's actually on our book list, book number 24, on our book list in our Truth Treaty book, his book. He also, he and his, uh, his partner, uh, Howard Elseff, opened up the 1611 King James Bible Museum there in Phoenix. And I'd highly encourage you to check that out, 1611 King James Bible Museum. And uh, it's, it's amazing, it's amazing. And uh, so there's some ideas right there on why I'm doing this, because that's how he talks. You have to be precise and precision with the Word of God. And uh, so, it's not just the scriptures, it's how you walk in the scriptures. It's how you walk in the scripture, how you walk in the word of God. And it's, uh, you see, this is not milk talk. This is not milk teaching. This is for those Christians that are hungry and thirsty for more. 
and not just more, but more abundantly. As John 10.10 10 said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. You can have life and come and stop right there and you go to heaven. But Jesus didn't stop there. He said, I came to give you life and life more abundantly. So it's really interesting there if you look at that. So a lot of people don't want the more and they don't want abundance because the abundance means that you're gonna have to kick out of your life the love of the world. Yeah, the love of the world has to leave if you want more of God. If you don't want more of God, then what's gonna happen as you grow, as a, as a person does, person grows and matures, and there's more room made inside of you as you grow and mature in the world or not in Christ, doesn't matter, then the world will move into you more and more. See, we grow and provide more capacity to receive whatever's around us. It's very important to understand that principle because that, in the Word of God, it talks about expanding your tent. God expands our heart. God expands our horizon. God gives eyes to see to those who want to see, ears to hear. There's, you see it all through the Scripture. God is the God of increase. All right? And so when God increases us, just by nature, how He made us, and if you're not serving Christ with all your heart, all your soul, all your life, then the world will come in and fill in all that new space and capacity that you have inside of you. And that's what happens to believers. They got a little bit of Jesus, and they grow and mature, and then five or ten years later, they've got all this worldliness in them and a little bit of Jesus. Because as you expand, as you grow, I talked to people that were 20 years old, I talk to them when they're 30, and they're fully encased in the world. Because at 20, between 20 and 30, you mature, which means you have more space in your brain, in your spirit. You, what, you, your life is widened out. Something's going to fill that. That's not going to be emptiness. And so Satan is watching you. God is watching you. And if you make room as you grow, Satan's going to come rushing in like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may me devour. And he can, he can devour you because he knows what he's doing. And he is a good devourer. He is great as job. He is the most subtle creature in the entire world and in heaven. Well, maybe not outside of God. But God's not subtle. Anyways, understand a lot of that principle. Because that's why this is important. It's not just the scriptures. It's the structure of the scriptures. See, that's what, that's what happens with cults and people who get off track and start believing some weird doctrines and weird teaching. That's the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. See, that's what happens with Christians. They get into those seducing spirits, and the spirits, those devils, seduce them. They convince them. They give them cotton candy and a joy and a funny, nice song to sing and uh, all kinds of wonderful feelings when they tattoo their Christian body. That, that God gave, you know, did Jesus ever get a tattoo? No. Did God, did Jesus ever tattoo, I mean, pierce his body up, put holes in it, and put pegs and earrings and, and belly button rings and all kinds of stuff that you put on those holes? No. Did, did Jesus have some kind of dreadlock, wicked, evil-looking haircut? No. Did Satan, did Jesus wear all kinds of ugly, satanic bracelets and, and ungodly necklaces and rings and all kinds of stuff that are ungodly? No. Then why are you doing that? As a believer, as a believer, you think that you're preparing yourself? You're not. The Bible says you're to be holy as I am holy. That's what he said. That's what God said to come away from that sin, to come away from the world, separate yourself. And when you get born again, let's say you're in that world and you're unholy, you're unrighteous, you're evil looking and you look evil. You talk evil, you act evil, you look evil. You know, for, you know, whatever. And God saves you, sets you free. You don't stay there. God's pulling you out of there. You come out of there, but you don't bring the world and the evilness with you. You don't do that unless, now listen to this, unless God specifically told you to bring that with you. And you better hear, you better know for an absolute fact that you're hearing from God. And if that's the case, then that 
testimony right there must be included in your story. Because if you just show up with all your tattoos and your dreadlocks and your ungodly haircuts and your body piercing and tattoos and everything else, you just show up and you never tell the people that God told you to stay this way because of your ministry that he's going to lead you in, then you're going to be leading people into the wrong place. So that's, a, that's Bible. That's Bible. Because if you make your brother sin, you are the fault. Not your brother. You are. So that's why you need to tell people your testimony of why you look the way you look. And that means every time. That's why when I got saved, that's why I know my testimony so well, because I've told it probably 10,000 times. I've been telling her every so much. I, it's like a part of my life. My testimony and how I got saved is a part of my life. People know where I come from. I don't make believe like I'm somebody that I'm not. I'm a truck driver who lived out in the trucking world for 40 years, out on the highways and byways of our country, and became a street preacher. But I've been called in the ministry since for a long time, <laughs> all my life. <laughs> and I've been serving God since I was 20 years old. But all kinds of different areas, all right? So structure. How you structure God's Word in your life. We're to build up our body. We're to build up our spirit with the Word of God, with the Word of God, not some preacher's book. Forget that. I'm so sick of every preacher selling their book to their congregation and everybody in the congregation who has extra money buys it and they make a ton of money. We only have so much time to read. Everybody is busy, 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 busy. The world has got us cram busy. So we only have a little bit of time to read. And every pastor should be telling, don't read the books that I'm reading. Read the Bible. Read the Word of God. Study the Word of God. And there is no extra time. There is no extra time. That's why the time that I give to read a pastor's, a minister's book, because I've read, you know, I read other books. But I set that time the last five or ten minutes that I'm awake, which is not quality time for God, I give that last portion of my physical awakeness to reading a preacher's book. I don't give my prime time to a preacher's book. I guarantee it. <laughs> no way. That's why it takes me, it probably has taken me two, 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 two years, two and a half years to go through the book list. Maybe three years. Maybe four years. I don't know. It's taken me forever to go through that book list. 25 books. Because I only give God, I give God the prime time in my life. I give Him the first part, the best part. I don't give Him the worst part, the last part. Why? Is that what you're doing? Oh, man. That's why you're not praying and reading the Word. Give God the best part of your day, the best part. And then you'll be able to come up with things like this and understand structure in the Word of God. And then you'll go into that structure. What do you think Noah was doing? Noah had to have plans on how to build that ark. That's a big boat. He never built a boat. He didn't know what rain was. He didn't know anything. You'd be surprised. You ought to take another channel look and go to that channel. Uh, um, I've skipped my name now. Um, oh, what's the guy's name that found all those artifacts? The wheels in the Red Sea crossing. Uh, anyways, if I think of it, I'll say it. I can't remember right now. Uh, Oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Anyways, God will produce in you knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. That comes from God. Every preacher, every minister who teaches and preaches points everybody back to God. Not one preacher should point to themselves. But I listen, you know, like on Saturdays, a lot of times I look around. So I went and looked around for a few different channels, a few different churches, and uh, sure enough, you know, they're pointing them, pointing the congregation to them. Now, out of their mouth, they say Jesus, and they say God. Uh, I listened to one guy, very famous man. If I mention his name, you'd know it. And uh, he quit, and I'm not going to say because if I say that, you'll know who he was. <laughs> I can't say that either. But I don't want to mention his name because it's not important. Because everybody's doing it. Many, not everybody, many people are doing it. And that is, they... How can I say this? 
They say one thing and they do another. See, they say one thing and they do another. That's why I didn't want to become a Christian because I saw hypocrisy. I saw hypocrites to the chalice come home. That's all I saw is hypocrites. Say one thing, I'm holy, I'm good, God is the best God, and go beat your wife. That's what I saw. Get drunk, sin, lay around, sleep with somebody else's wife, somebody else's husband. That's what I saw in the church. Maybe God gave me eyes to see that, but I didn't want anything to do with it. Nothing. It took me a long time before I got to Jesus. I was 20 years old. I was raised in the church. I was raised in the church. So many bus drivers on me. I ride the bus. And I ride it this way. I wear it. Oh, here comes the police. Hang on here. Hang on, I gotta cover my ears. All right. So let me talk about these two verses real quick. 30 verse 20. So the title of our Sunday prayer letter today is Offering Made by Fire. That's Exodus 30 verse 20 of the King James Bible. All right. And uh, so we'll go to Exodus chapter 30 verse 20. And we'll read that and then we'll go to, and then we'll put the two together. All right. All right. So Exodus chapter 30 verse 20. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, when they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water that they die not. Or when they come near to the altar to minister to burnt offering made by fire unto the Lord. Okay, so there's the title right there, offering made by fire, right there in the scripture. I'm not gonna talk about that. Let me just go over here now. This is the other one that joins with this one here on the opposite end is Revelation. No, yeah, Revelation 8, 5. Revelation 8, 5. Okay, Revelation 8, 5. So we've been coming up from the ends to the middle. Revelation 8, 5. All right. Right here in Revelation chapter 8, verse 5. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth, and there were voices. Oh, hang on. I got another ambulance or a fire truck thank you Lord. all right that goes on okay revelation 8 5 and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth and there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Now you see what I was talking about earlier. You read these two verses here. You read this verse, this uh, chapter 8, verse 5 in Revelation. And you, you couple that with Exodus chapter 30, chapter 30, verse 20. And if you read it with the physical, like, I don't get it. That's what you would say. I don't get it. See, and if you say, I don't get it, then you didn't hear what I said earlier. Which means if you didn't hear what I said earlier, that means you really don't have ears to hear. You don't. And so therefore, your next job would be to repent to God that, Lord, I'm sorry I wasn't listening to your word. And that, and I then pray that God would open your ears and spend time with God Asking him to open your ears so you can hear this in the spirit, right? Because God's speaking. He's speaking to everybody. If you don't have ears to hear, you're not going to hear it. Sorry. And so that's what you got to do. Is you go into this verse, you go into this verse, and spend some time. This is kind of a weird teaching. Normally I'd want to talk on the verses and I kind of want to do, but I don't want to. Because, I w because if I taught on this, it still wouldn't make any sense to you. So why would I talk when it wouldn't make any sense to you? Because I want the Holy Ghost to teach you the word of truth. 
Holy Ghost is the spirit of truth, and this is the word of truth. And his job, by Jesus' words that told us that the Holy Ghost will be sent, and he will bring back to your remembrance the things that I've taught you, and he'll continue, and he'll teach you the word of truth. He's our teacher, and he doesn't speak on his own. He says what Jesus, the Word of God, says. Just like Jesus did the same thing. Jesus didn't speak. It was the Father speaking by, through Jesus. Anyways. So, go to these two verses. Read, each, read it. And first one thirty, Exodus chapter 30, read that. And uh, then spend some time looking at it some time before the Lord ask to kind of look at the words and kind of see all the words there. Look at them, look at them, look at them. Have eyes to see. <laughs> if you can't see it, then pray. Then then you got, if you can't, still can't see it, then there tells you one more thing. Repent, turn away from not being able to see and turn to God and ask him, Lord, give me eyes. With the ears, give me eyes to see also because I can't see it. I can't see it. I can see it so clearly, but if I show you and teach you what I'm seeing, it won't mean anything to you. It won't. But what I am saying to you means something, and that is, this is the work that you need to do if you want to grow, like I'm talking about. If you want to prepare, because to prepare is to prepare your spirit. Prepare is not buying a bunch of camping food and some lanterns and some matches and a flashlight or two and some batteries and putting in a bug out kit in your house. <laughs> that's preparing the flesh and that's not going to make it at all. So that means you have to prepare your spirit. That means it's going to take work. A lot of people don't want to work. I don't want to work, Lord. I want to just have it given to me. God gave you, gave you salvation. After that, you need to work out your salvation. You got to work out your uh, what's that works meet for repentance works there's all kinds of work that you need to do after you receive the free gift without works by faith salvation if you're not saved my friend I'm telling you that's the first step for you to take receive Jesus Christ as your Savior amen that's your first step to preparing for and being to be ready for that storm that will come don't know when, but it will come. So as you prepare, and let's say the storm doesn't come during your lifetime. Let's just, for example, while you're preparing, while God is preparing you, you prepare your children, you prepare all your friends, your family, you prepare all the people around you. So that when everybody that's of your age passes away and the storm hasn't hit, your children are already prepared and they'll teach their children and everybody will be prepared for that day, that terrible day. All right, let's pray. Lord, I thank you that you're preparing us. We don't know how to prepare. That's why we seek your counsel. That's why we seek your Holy Ghost. We ask you to baptize us with the Spirit of God, to fill us up, to give us full of, full of the Spirit, full of faith, full of wisdom, full of understanding, full of knowledge, so that we can do, so we can do the works that it takes to prepare so that we're ready. We thank you, Lord Jesus, and we give you all the glory for what's happening in each of our lives. In your name, Jesus, amen and amen. All right, so I hope that made sense to you. It made sense to me, I think. <laughs> A lot of times I don't know what I'm saying. But today's Sunday, uh, February 4, I think. And uh, tomorrow is Monday, and I'm gonna be up there at Baseline and Broadway, Lord willing, and I'm physically able, but I'm hoping I can be there. I say that, and I'm not lying if I don't show up, but like I said, I'm going through trial, tribulation in my own life, and it's really, I'm physically struggling, right? It's not sin, it's just God is doing a work in me, preparing me for the next step. So I'm hoping to be there, and uh, that's at Baseline and Broadway from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. That's where we're at here too. All right, so God bless you, man. I love you very much. Bye.